Hi, today I'll show you how to configure WinUAE emulation to play Amiga games on Windows. The simple way. Emulating Amiga is very easy today and works on pretty much any PC made in the last 15 years. And all you'll need are three things, all easily obtainable via web browser. First is an emulator itself. We're going to use WinUAE here. It's a mature piece of software developed and expanded over many years that proved the best choice for the task. It can be downloaded from winuae.net and I'll leave a link in the description below. As you can see, the site itself is pretty basic and all we really need to do is click download on top and then pick installer 64 bit below. This will ask you to either save or open the file and to be honest, either is fine, but to simplify the process here, I suggest just clicking open. The installer is running and it's so simple that you can just pretty much click your way through, hitting the next until it's installed. I won't do it here as it's already installed on my system, but keep in mind that it will drop a link on your desktop and in the start menu, for easier up launching in the future. But before we do run it, we have to talk about the remaining two requirements. Second are the kickstart files, or in the case of most popular Amiga 500 that we're going to emulate here, a kickstart 1.3 file. By far the easiest and the only legal way of obtaining those these days is to buy either Amiga Forever on PC, link in the description below, for around 10 euros or 12 bucks for the base package, or even better, Amiga Forever Essentials on Android for 99 cents or a buck, buck 20. Both provide access to all most popular Amiga kickstarts, so you'll get access to the 1.3 required for this video and 3.1 among others required for emulation of newer Amiga 1200. That configuration will be featured in another video though. And if you're not feeling like paying for it, you can always Google Amiga Kickstart 1.3 download, which should allow you to find it for free in no time. Legality of it, however, is not something I'll be discussing in this video. One way or another, make sure to save the Kickstart file to somewhere that you'll have an easy access to, a separate folder or even on the desktop. Anyway, since we've got an emulator installed and Kickstart file downloaded, the last thing that we really need are the games. Arguably, they are the most important thing of this video, really. They come in ADF format, where each small ADF file corresponds to the Amiga diskette. Some games came with the aforementioned Amiga Forever package, but I'm pretty sure you'll just want to have access to a wider choice. So, more can be easily downloaded by Googling or from any abandonware site. For instance, Planet Emulation. As per usual, the link will be in the description below. It's good to keep games in separate folder from the kickstarts, but I'll let you save yours wherever you'd like, as long as you remember where it is. And since we've already got everything that we'll need, we can talk about WinUAE configuration now. But before we do, if you like what I do and my videos, please hit that like and subscribe buttons below. It's not much, but really helps a lot. Thanks. Now launch the WinUAE emulator by either the icon on the desktop or at the start menu. At first, the amount of categories on the left of the applications window may seem overwhelming, but rest assured, for the purpose of gaming, at least when it comes to most Amiga titles, majority of this will not be of any interest to us. Click the ROM tab on the left, and in the main ROM file field, click the dotted button and navigate to the folder where you saved your kickstart file. For me, this is here, and if you have more than one, select the one that's version 1.3. Then move to the RAM tab, and make sure that both chip and slow memory are set to 512 kilobytes. It's the most common configuration for an A500 and the one that 95% of all Amiga titles will run flawlessly on. Next will be the display tab. Here we'll configure our graphical output. You can play Amiga games in windowed or full screen mode. Personally I prefer full screen, so I'll pick 920 by 1080 here. And we'll set 920 by 1536 for windowed, as it's closer to Amiga's aspect ratio for the windowed mode. There are a few things that we have to turn on here. So make sure that both horizontal and vertical centering is on, line mode is set to double, and interlaced line mode to double fields. Finally, tick blacker than black, remove interlaced artifacts, and VGA mode resolution auto switch. And since I like full screen gaming, I'll also make sure to choose full screen here. Last but not least, click on the game ports tab and make sure that port 2 is set to keyboard layout B. This will allow your keyboard arrow keys to emulate joystick movements and right control and alt keys to emulate the fire button. 
If you have controller connected, like an Xbox gamepad, it will also show in the list and can be chosen. We've set up all the basics now and are ready to go. But before we do, it's a good practice to save what we've made here so that you won't have to do it the next time, and we'll just load it when necessary. Head to the Configurations tab, and in the Name field, type in the name you want to save your settings under. I have a couple of configs here already, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll call mine A500 Video. Then click Save. From now on, whenever you run WinUAE, you will click through to the Configurations tab, and click on your saved configuration, and then on Load, and it will restore all your settings. So how about we run a game now? Get to the Floppy Drive tab. You will notice that there is a floppy drive emulation speed slider there. You can use it to have the disks load considerably faster, sometimes near instantly. That said, it's not compatible with all games, so initially it's best to keep everything at the default 100%. I know the games I will show off today, so I'll set it to 800% to speed up the loading times. Most Amigas support up to 4 disk drives named DF with 0 to 3 suffix. Not all games use those, and henceforth we will only use one here. Click on three dots button to find the game that you downloaded and would like to run. So, let's have a look at The Settlers. It's an amazing gem of a game, and high recommendation, but I am running it for the demo purposes here only, so won't get too much into the game itself. Click on the disk file, then open, and then start at the very bottom of WinUAE window. This will start the game. Keep in mind that Amiga loads files from disks, in this case ADF disk images, so at 100% speed it may take a little time. So, whenever you'll see an icon like that, I will be speeding up the video to rush through the loading. Now, isn't it an amazing intro? Anyway... Throughout it and when loading the games, Amiga will prompt for another disc for the games that have more than one. Alright, and that's a big one. If there's one most important button on your keyboard for Amiga emulation, it's F12. Whenever you press it, it will pause the game and bring you back to emulation configuration. So, we will do it now here to change the disk and continue with the loading. That said, I'm pretty sure that I'll have to do it at least once more before we load the actual game.
And here we are, the game menu. So let's click start just to check if it works. And it does, brilliant. And Settlers is an amazing title. Check it out if you get a chance. When you're done playing, hit that F12 once again. And if you want to try another game, just change the disc and then click reset below to reset the Amiga. Like that. I will cover Amiga 1200 emulation in another video. It will require little changes to what we did here, but it's simple stuff really, and I don't want this video to be overly long. Mortal Kombat loaded and clearly works just fine. So let's F12 once more, and if you want to quit the emulation altogether, click the quit at the bottom of WinUAE window, simple as that. Anyway, if you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe buttons below. And if you're feeling especially generous, you may want to consider a small donation. All the details are in the description below. It would go towards upgrading my editing rig, getting a new mic and possibly a camera too. That said, that is all for me, have a good one and I'll see you next time.